Hey guys, what's up? This is Billy from adultcello.com. Today, we're going on Google and we're gonna check out what are the most frequently asked questions involving cello, and I'm just gonna answer them right off the top of my head. So, if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to my channel. It really helps me out and keeps this channel going. I'd really appreciate it. So let's just dive right in. Okay, I'm gonna write, why is cello, pronounced cello with a CH. Okay, that's the first thing. Okay, as far as I know, it's from violoncello. It's, so it's a, it's a shortened form of the word violoncello, which is Italian, and in Italian, if you see C-E, it's ch. That's why it's not cello, it's cello, because it's the short of violoncello. Okay. Why is cello so hard to play? Wow, that is <laughs> how, to, how to make a brief answer to that. Cello is hard to play for so many reasons. Um, so unlike a guitar, we, we don't have frets, for example. So the left hand, basically, you're going to use kind of like a 3D mapping system, a navigation system in your mind, and that will tell you kind of just from playing over and over and checking your work, you figure out kind of where the notes are on the instrument. There's no real visual cues we have. So that's hard. That's really hard. And then the bow, for someone beginning, just holding the bow comfortably, it's like a, a whole journey in itself. Get Developing more and more nuance with the bow, I think if it was just the bow, if that's what cello was, was just bowing back and forth, the bow would be very hard, but, but not crazy. But when you add the bow to what you're doing in the left hand, which is so totally different, and you got these two totally different things happening at the same time, and then you're trying to coordinate the two for a beautiful shift and trying to get like certain slides or nuances and then you want certain colors. This is really hard. The whole thing is really hard and um, that's also kind of what's great about it because you're never done um, in a good way. Why is cello the best instrument? I think it's because it sounds so much like a human voice and for the same reason that it's so hard without the frets we can do these gorgeous like vocal slides when you play certain notes and you can vibrate, like unlike on a piano where you just kind of, you press the button, the hammer hits the string and that's it. On a cello, you can vibrate and you can like warm up tones or you can make it like a throbbing intense vibrato. You can make it like a silver, like shimmer kind of, like a Debussy, like afternoon cloud in Paris kind of thing. Um, it's just, there's just no limit to what you can do on a cello. It's an amazing instrument and it's also beautiful. It's like this, you know, it's like a, an art piece in itself. You play on it, but a beautiful cello with, with beautiful spruce and maple. I mean, you just, sometimes you just, if you have a great instrument, you just, I'll take my instrument out of the case and I just look at it and I'm inspired to make great sounds because it, it's just, it itself is beautiful. Why is cello so hard? We kind of got that already. Let's keep going. Why is cello better than violin? Okay. So I'm not going to say cello is absolutely better than violin, but here's reasons that make it better than violin. Number one, the low register. Okay. Those, the deep, just playing the open C string and getting a big, fat, thick ribbon of sound. It's fantastic. And it's something that the violin can't touch. We have this low end to our, our sonic range. And to me, it's like, I always imagine, especially on like those Italian, those older Italian, uh, like a Ruggieri. Like a really old Italian cello. I, I hear someone play on one and play that open C string and it's just like, it's so resonant. It almost has its own vibrato, even though it's an open string. And I just imagine this ancient crocodile opening its eyes and just croaking like, Rah. you know, it's just, it's fantastic. I mean, that's, to me, if you said, why is it better? That's my number one thing. And, and a smaller thing was that I think for adult learners, it's easier ergonomically to get used to playing a cello and having our arms in this kind of orientation than to, you know, have the, the elbow kind of turned in and, and be doing the violin uh, fingerboard. I think the cello is just a little more straightforward in that sense too. Okay. Um, why is cello, why, why cello is so expensive? So let's just talk about why cellos are so expensive. Um, I'm personal friends with a couple luthiers and I am amazed when I go to their 
workshops and I see hundreds of tools that they use all in the making of one instrument. So for fine cellos, like very high-end cellos, one maker is basically doing the whole thing. So they're picking the wood, they're cutting out the forms, they're graduating the wood and thinning it down to the perfect you know, amount. They put the purfling in, they glue it together, they put in the linings, they put in the, the blocks that support the ribs, they you know, do all the varnishing, they put the they plane the fingerboard they put that together it's it's incredible how many different steps there are in the making of a cello it's just crazy that they have the ability to shape the way a piece of wood is going to sound so it's incredible what luthiers do and there is a really good reason those instruments are so expensive now if we're talking about the older instruments that are worth like millions of dollars and you see you know, a Stradivarius was sold for five million. That's a little bit more of simple supply and demand. So you have these makers who have basically, there's like a consensus, for example, Stradivarius, Guarnerius, these old Italian makers who are no longer with us. <laughs> They've been dead for hundreds of years. They made these instruments that are still prized today as some of the most beautiful sounding instruments you could possibly get. First off, they stopped making instruments. There's no new Stradivarius coming out soon. And over the years, they get damaged, they get stolen. I've, I heard about one that fell into the river and, and they brought it back and I think to Hill and Sons in London, and they actually put the whole thing back together, like piece by piece, and someone's playing on it to this day. So it's that's how much they're valued, is that they'll reconstruct it. It was like kindling. It was just a bunch of scraps, and they, re, they put it all back together. So, you know, there's just not a lot of them around, and the only thing that's gonna happen is eventually there'll be less of them. So it's, you know, that's gonna make the price go up. Is cello hard to learn? We kind of answered that. Is cello easier than violin? Okay, my personal opinion is yes. And I think it's partly the ergonomics. I think it's, you know, for us as cellists, we can use our physicality a little bit more, like to play on the C string. You really have to kind of, it's a little more blue collar. I feel like violin is is so much finesse and, you know, kind of taking weight out of your arm because you, you can't, it's easy to crush the strings. But I, I have friends who are violinists who say that they think cello is probably a little bit harder. So I think it's whatever you're used to. The other one seems like, oh, I can't imagine, you know, doing that. So that's what I would say. I think it's easier, but I, I know a lot of violinists who think cello is harder. So <laughs> what are the two cellos names? Oh, the two cello, the guys. I was, <laughs> I was like, which two cellos? Okay. Yeah, yeah, the, okay, that's just the two people for two cellos, that, that group of those two, those two guys, what are their names? Okay, I'm actually not 100%, I know it's Stepan Hauser and I, the other guy is Luca, I think, Lucas, um, but anyway, those are two people who are very famous now. Uh, I thought they were talking about individual cellos, I had no idea what was going on there. Um, okay, what are the best cellos? So. I'm gonna answer this for people who subscribe to my channel. So this is for adult learners. What I'm gonna answer is what to look for in a cello for yourself, okay? The best cello is gonna have sonic characteristics that you already like. So some cellos are bright, some cellos are dark, kind of moodier sounding. Some are like the tone is like very focused and penetrating and then some is more like a diffuse, like mellow sound. If you have a preference, I would go try to find a cello that kind of fits that general preference already because otherwise you might, if you have a really bright cello and you really like kind of that warm, mellow sound, you might just be spending a lot of time trying to alter the natural characteristics of an instrument. So why do that when you could just get a cello that's already kind of mellow, all right? So it's, it's working with you. The other thing I would say is you want a cello that helps you, okay? So I've made many mistakes in my career as a cellist because I'm, I've loved equipment ever since I got into this. I think it's fascinating. And a couple times I ended up getting a cello that I thought the sound was so good that I was willing to put up with 
X. You know, whether it's maybe the health of the instrument is a little dicey seeming, or maybe it's it's harder to play because of maybe the string tension, or do, there's some aspect of it that's harder to play. I've always, in the end, ended up more frustrated that I'm struggling against my cello than happy about the sound I can make when it's working with me. So my current, like where I am today, is I want to find a cello that has characteristics I really appreciate and then I want to make sure that it is essentially very straightforward in terms of how to produce quiet sounds, loud sounds, you know, like string crossings, everything feels like, okay, this is built to help me on my journey. This is not going to be another hurdle I've now put in front of myself that's going to make things even harder. I'm typing in R cellos heavy. Okay, that's actually interesting. They can change. Some are very heavy, actually, and some feel, you know, really light. A lot of times it's other parts like the end pin. For example, I have a steel end pin. Steel's a little on the heavier side in terms of metals. And so I, you know, my backup cello has um, a carbon fiber end pin and the whole cello itself feels actually a lot lighter. Certain cellos, yeah, they're, they're heavier. And it can feel, in my hand at least, the difference can feel like in expressed in terms of pounds not like ounces also not are they heavy compared to each other but like how heavy are they so they're usually i think probably somewhere between like five to seven pounds so it's like if you had like a, a small dog in your hand and you're carrying it around by by one arm or you had a small dog that's uh, essentially the same um it's a little weird but yeah it's like one small dog okay our cello's loud <laughs> so if you're starting to learn the cello and you live in an apartment and you're worried about your neighbors, you're going to think that cellos are the loudest things on earth. If you're in an apartment and you share rooms with a trumpeter, you're going to think that your cello is just pathetically weak. It's kind of amazing when you think of those soloists. It shows how amazing composers are because when you think of a cello, a cellist in front of an orchestra playing a solo, there's 90 people behind that cellist. How on earth is he or she being heard? And a lot of it is that the composer has written the texture of the music in a way so that the cello doesn't get completely swallowed up. But it's pretty amazing how loud they can be when they need to be. Is cello a bass instrument? Yes, it is. I mean, at this point, cello is a soloistic instrument. I'd say almost as much as a violin is, basically. We have so much repertoire where we're the soloist and we're singing high up on the cello, but if you look at ensembles, um, you know, st standard ensembles like an orchestra or a chamber music setting, string quartet, more often than not, the cello will be playing a supportive role where we kind of handle the foundational aspects of the music. So we're going to be the ones that are keeping the rhythm together. And then we're also the ones that will be you know, influencing the harmony, we change notes and the chord changes and that, you know, brings a new color to whatever the violin's doing way up high. Bass instrument, yes, and also kind of, when you think bass, if you think of foundational, usually the most standard thing is to have a melody high up, a higher pitched melody, and then lower stuff underneath that informs the context around the melody. What are cellos made of? Okay, it can vary, but the most standard thing is spruce on top, tends to be, I believe, a softer wood, more resonant, okay? And then usually the ribs and the back of the cello is maple, which is a harder wood, which gives it the stability and the strength it needs. Um, and most often with maple, you'll see, they call it flamed maple, so you see like kind of uh, flame, like a flame pattern in the wood. It's incredibly beautiful. Um, and to, to that point, a lot of times, you know, if you really kind of nerd out and get into it, it'll be like this forest in Italy, that's where we got the spruce, okay? This, this part of, like this region of Bosnia, this Bosnian maple. So it's, it's not just any old maple. A lot of people will have wood they buy and then they wait like 30 years, 40 years, or they buy wood that's already aged and that kind of informs the sound even more. Um, what are cellos worth? Okay. You could go on Amazon right now and you could get yourself a cello for $199, I bet. Or maybe at, at most you could get a full package for like 300, 400 bucks. Or you could go to like a, a fancy shop like uh, Beers in uh, London and you could spend 
millions of dollars on a Stradivarius instrument. So what are they worth? There, it depends on what kind of cello we're talking about. So the biggest kind of cutoff I would say is how many people made this instrument? <laughs> if it's one person who's recognized as a, a legit, you know, expert maker, you're instantly going to be bumped up. I would say that for someone who's currently living and is considered an expert maker, you could expect to spend at least $30,000 on a cello. Okay, and that goes up. And then if they're dead and their, you know, their work is kind of revered now and people love their work, it quickly gets crazy. I mean, there's cellos that are in the $250,000 price range that were made in 1900 because they're, you know, Italian makers. Um, so it's, it's pretty fascinating. The, the price goes way up pretty quickly. Then the next step down would be we say a workshop cello. So it's still all people but it's a workshop. It's like a whole bunch of guys working on a car or something, you know, it's like this guy did this part, this guy did this part. That usually brings the value down. And then finally would be a factory cello, which is like nee, nee. And it, you know, usually if it comes to you, there's going to be one or more issues. It doesn't, not all the parts fit perfectly. So, you know, it, it there's a wide variety, but it's, it's pretty crazy that you could spend $400 and you could spend $4 million and it's essentially, the same type of musical instrument it's just that's how much variation you get are two cellos still together i don't know i just don't know but they certainly brought a lot of eyes onto the cello as an instrument and they're both in my opinion they are both fantastic players regardless of what you think of maybe the certain facial expressions that happen from time to time while they're playing. They both are incredible players in their own right. So I give them props. I hope they're still together if they want to be, and I hope they're broken up if they don't want to be. So I think we ended up finishing this little video with the most pressing questions. Are two cellos still together? You know, that, that really sums up everything we need to know about cello. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have any questions you'd like me to answer, aside from the ones I did today, you can leave them in the comment section below and please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't done so already. Thanks so much.